Father Albert says you're supposed to be wearing purple. Pardon me? Father Albert says you're supposed to be wearing purple. I'm going to wear white. I know. Supposed to wear. Yeah. Are you supposed to wear pink? Before we start um, Mass, let me tell you a couple stories. Um, and Father Albert gets kind of upset with me because I don't look, I don't want to wear the long vestments that look so nice and all. And I keep telling him that uh, me looking pretty, that ship has sailed a long <laughs> time ago. Right now, on the third Sunday of Advent, you're supposed to be wearing uh, not purple, but pink. <laughs> yeah, I don't do well with pink, so we're going to have purple and white. And I'm sure God will understand. Two little stories I came across in my readings this last week that I enjoyed. Uh, the two presidents that could laugh at themselves, Grover Cleveland, he weighed in a little over 300 pounds. And when he was president, the uh, U.S. was building the Panama Canal. And he was forced to go down there and supervise and look over the whole operation. And he cabled back to his secretary afterwards and said, this is the worst day of my life. He said it was 110 all day. And I had to ride a horse all day. Yet I thought I was going to die down here. It was awful. And his secretary cabled him a message and said, How's the horse doing? <laughs> Another story about Abraham Lincoln. He was riding down this country road on a horse, and there was an old lady walking towards him. And she just said, Sir, you are the ugliest man I have ever met. And um, Abe said to her, well, I can't do much about that. And she said, you could stay home. <laughs> Let us go. Our opening song is in the Breaking Bread Missile, number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39. <clears throat>
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us think about ourselves and acknowledge the wrong that is doing in ourselves and thus prepare to celebrate this liturgy. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the, the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate those joys always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> the desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble Make firm the knees that are weak, so that those hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing. Crowned with everlasting joy, <coughs> they will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make firm your hearts, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And proclaiming of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Please be seated. John the Baptist was in prison and he heard all the things that Jesus was doing. And he sent a, a few of his followers to Jesus to see what he was doing and to ask him a question. And so they came and uh, they asked Jesus a question. Are you the one that we're looking for, the Messiah, or should we be looking elsewhere? And Jesus said, go back and tell John that the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame walk and the death at times come back to life and lepers are cleansed. Go back and tell John that and tell him Anyone who is blessed who will follow my teaching. Now, surprisingly enough, uh, no, there's more gospel, I gotta say. <laughs> Get over anxious. When, when, they, when the, uh, John's uh, disciples left Jesus, talked about John. And he said to the people, you all fluttered out to see John preaching in the desert. What did you go there to see? A reed shaken in the wind? Of course not. 
Did you go out to see somebody wearing expensive clothes? You find those people in the palaces, you don't find them out in the desert. And I say to you honestly, among all the, the prophets that have come in Israel, John is greater than all of them. But even the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. The gospel of the Lord. That whole episode, episode is just really rather shocking. But there certainly seems to be evidence that John had a hard time accepting Jesus as the Messiah. He sent some of his followers to ask that same question before this, and now he sent them again. And even towards the end of his life, he probably didn't have more than a few days to live, he still had his doubts about Jesus. And how Jesus ended that, that episode with his followers, a very pointed remark, blessed is the man who can absorb what I'm saying. And that was aimed very much at John. And I am, I presume it worked. John was, uh, Jesus said that John was the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. All the prophets came to the Jews to remind them of their commitment to keep the law of God. And you know, if, you're, if your purpose in life is to make other people behave themselves, it's almost impossible that sooner or later you're, not, you're going to turn to fear. Scare them. And that's the way John worked. When John the Baptist saw some of the Pharisees come at him, he said, who warned you to come away from the wrath of God that is going to befall us? Jesus would never have said anything like that. But you know, I, 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 anyway, if, if any of you are anywhere near my age, and some of you are, we were kind of raised in the Catholic Church that way. We filled up our church at every Mass because we told people if they didn't go to Mass on Sunday, they would go to hell. And they believed it. I believed it. So we filled up our churches by means of fear. And that has no place in the religion of Jesus Christ. And now we're kind of going through a reaction to that. A younger generation has come along and, and said, we don't believe we're going to hell, and so they stopped going to Mass. And we'll work through that in time. Jesus gave us a new way to approach God, and he aimed it at John the Baptist, but we can learn the same thing about our relationship with God. When I was in my uh, middle 30s, which would be 50 years ago, I was still affected to some degree with this fear that I grew up with, fear of God. And I certainly was not real good at keeping all of his commandments at that point, and that bothered me. 
and I made a retreat at the Jesuit retreat house in Detroit and got one of those crazy Jesuits to be the retreat master, and just me privately. And I didn't mention to him that I still had some fear. He said, oh, listen, we got to address that. Here's what we're going to do for a penance after this confession. You are going to pick up a Bible every night before you go to bed and read the 15th chapter of St. Luke twice. Once out loud and then another time quietly to yourself. And he said, do you know what's in there? I said, yeah, that's the parable of the prodigal son. He said, I want you to do that for 30 days every night. And I walked out thinking, how did I get into this mess? Uh, but I did it every night for 30 nights. And honestly, I, I, I feel like I've never been the same. I still get out that, that 15th chapter of Luke and read it a lot of nights. And it shows us what Jesus was saying about God, that there's no need to fear, that God loves us no matter what we do, that the love is unconditional and it will not change. And it was a beautiful way to get across the message that Jesus was trying to get across in our gospel of today. And one thing I'm very sure of, I have never had one speck of fear of God since that time. I've been relaxed. And I've enjoyed. Do you know who God is in your life? Do you have a relationship with God that you continue on? And that's what we are about. That what, that's what our spirituality is about. And I think we need to really reach down within ourselves and go as deep as possible. And the great mystics of our religion have said, when you go in deep, uh, as deep as possible inside yourself, that's where you're going to find God. He's always been there. And he loves it there. And that was the message of Christ to John the Baptist. And it's the message of Christ to all of us. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Lord and God before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, seen with Father, through him all things were made. Amen. was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day. the the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom I have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshipped and loved. Who is spoken to the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. One baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us recall the intentions for which we would pray. That during this season of Advent, the church may testify to the Lord's coming with patience and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That world leaders commit to themselves to fair and honest economic growth so that all people in all regions may enjoy peace and fruitful lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those in our parish community who feel their faith is being tested may find hope this Advent season through our gospel message of patience and fulfillment. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those suffering from poverty and those who are alone and lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our sister diocese in Lodwar, Kenya, our sister parish in Guatemala, and our sister Ambrose St. Ambrose Parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, those in our book of intentions, and those calling in requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Matthew J. Maurer, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, help us to enter into this Advent season. Help us to look with, with the grace of the coming of Christ as he did it in the first century and as he comes to us now. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 501, All That Is Hidden, number 501.
My brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, O oh Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in your sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. And so of all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with out end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your, your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he 
was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister for you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will say the word of my soul.
Our communion song is number 438, Be Not Afraid. Number 438. The directories are here. If you had a family picture taken for the directory, there is a copy with your name on it in the vestibule. If you accidentally took a directory that did not have your name on it, please return it to the office. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you for your generosity to the Retirement Fund for the Religious. Please return and place unwrapped gifts for the St. Ambrose Giving Tree with the tag attached in the wrap box next to the Giving Tree this weekend. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the donations to the 2023 Confirmation Class Warm Winter Clothes Drive for Kalamazoo's homeless residents. They are very appreciative to receive such nice warm outerwear. The St. Ambrose Advent Penance Service will be on Tuesday, December 20th at 7 o'clock p.m. The sign-up sheet for the Christmas Masses are in the vestibule. Please volunteer and help us to have a joyous Christmas. Thank you. The children will be covering the 4 p.m. Mass. Christmas decorations will be put up on Friday, December 23rd, after the 9.15 a.m. Mass. Please come and give us a hand. Please take the children's bulletins and Christmas activity pages for your children and grandchildren, a free activity that you can do together to help teach your children the good news. <laughs> we are honored to have Bishop Bradley at St. Ambrose tomorrow to celebrate Mass at 9 a.m. Please come and welcome him and have cake and donuts and coffee after the Mass in the Parish Activity Center following the Mass. All are welcome. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Pat. I just want to make a small correction. Uh, Bishop Bradley is coming next week on the 18th. Yeah, at 9 a.m. Mass. Thank you. So uh, you can see Bruce Martin is coming up here. I've given him two minutes to give us a small report. <laughs> Uh, Not sure I can do that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Bruce Martin. I'm our parish liaison to our sister parish in Guatemala, and I just returned uh, from another trip there a couple of weeks ago. And Father Albert um, asked me to give you a quick, um, all caps, report. Um, we're contributing, we're sponsoring 28 scholarships re recipients again next year. Um, most of them are in high school. A few of them are in, in junior high. Uh, we're partnering with the Sister Celeste Durr Foundation in order to do that. The total cost of 28 scholarships is uh, over $13,000. And uh, we contributed this year a little over $3,000 to scholarships. So thanks to Sister Celeste Durr Foundation, we'll be able to uh, meet the full commitment there. A very substantial one, by the way. 28 kids is a, is a lot. Um, we also contributed about $4,600 to the parish. Uh, ever since arriving in the parish, Father Santos has been busy trying to restore uh, the parish buildings, which were in terrible shape. He's accumulated some debts doing that, and this $4,600 contribution will help to retire uh, those debts, which I understand are uh, almost eliminated. I just wanted to mention that I'm always inspired when I, when I go there. And the two things that most inspire me uh, are the, the culture of the martyrs that exists in our, our parish there. Um, the Diocese of Quiche is about the size of Kalamazoo. It's the poorest diocese in Guatemala. It's filled with indigenous people, not Ladinos. It's about 90 plus percent indigenous. Um, so far, the Vatican has beatified 10 people from that diocese coming out of the war during the, primarily during the 1980s. Um, there's a list of 100 more who are being investigated. Uh, everybody I meet down there um, knows somebody or the family of somebody who was a martyr. The one I learned about this time was a 12-year-old boy named Juanito um, who worked in the parish and who was tortured and killed by the military because he was a relatively big kid and uh, they thought maybe he was a gorilla, especially since he was exhibiting some leadership qualities. So I'm almost touched by those, uh, by those stories, by the, the faith that they um, represent. I, I think each of them is a story in our own, in our own time of, uh, 
of Easter. Um, so I always appreciate that. I always appreciate, too, their gratitude. Um, they see themselves as very poor, in a poor diocese, as I said, in an inconsequential country. Um, it always makes a big impression on them that uh, somebody as big as the United States, a parish way up north here, they have no idea where Michigan is, for example, um, would, would, uh, would make the effort, uh, make the contributions, make the commitment to have a relationship with them. Um, so I'm always touched by that, and uh, I know for that reason, Sa Father Santos sends his gratitude to all of you, uh, his blessings uh, for a wonderful holiday season. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank Let you us much. pray. <laughs> okay, as you wait for, for the prayer, just, just remain standing. Just be standing. <laughs> Okay, as I thank Bruce for keeping the two minutes, and I want to thank you also for your support to, to the missions. So I think those people are very blessed by your wonderful generosity. It was a substantial amount of money you, you contributed and to help the, that mission there. Let us say this prayer and then we'll conclude. Heart of Christ, Christ. renew their your grace in your love. Help, help them to hold themselves more deeply to building up your body, the church, so that we may all become one in your life and love. Let your Holy Spirit be kindled the fire of your love within our prisons. Is this what I'm saying? Help them to set fire, which the faithful practice of their priestly ministry. May we support and encourage our priests at prayer as they strive to be good, holy, and compassionate, and inspire the pastors for us May we grow faithfully and joyfully in your presence in our world. With a word of blessing, help all our families to encourage each other to respond to the invitation following in our particular vocations. Help many more young men to serve your church and Christian ministry for our diocese. Loving and merciful God, since the beginning of time, we have been making all things new. Call our world back to you, deepen our faith, renew our grace, and guide our entire diocese, priests, and people through their life into the everlasting life of heaven. May we proclaim with all our hearts, you are my Lord and my God, as you renew us in your life-giving love, now and forever. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming Christmas season. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our closing song is number 573, Let Heaven Rejoice. Number 573. <coughs>